Um, now, I'm just going to talk to you briefly, mate, and then because the last year I had 30 minutes with you and I loved it and I passed the monkey like cracked, but uh, I'm going to give Russell some time with you. What we're going to do, we're going to leave the Division 3 stuff alone until I get back. Obviously, you're the coach of Seabock, but uh, we're just going to talk about you um, and me. Um, got a few funny ones for you. Don't know if this is true. This one comes from Rowie. I think Jason Rowie. Oh, no. Did you win the Queen of Roses competition in 2004? Yeah, is that a... I was runner-up, I think. Is that, What's that? Is that... Just doing the pruning the roses. Okay. It's a bit of an in-house thing. I, I, I love doing my garden, so um, that's probably what he's talking about there. All right. I love no my roses. No worries. Um, now, North Adelaide Team of the Century, huge. That is, I mean, that's a huge honour, but how pissed off were you that they named you on the bench? Uh, looking at the squad on the side, I was pretty happy about being on the pine. Um, there's some fair names there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was... With Any, Andrew, anywhere. <coughs> Andrew made the team? I think he did, yeah. He, he made oh. the guts too, didn't he? Oh, oh, what a joke. Yeah. Jeez, he must have picked the team. Yeah. <laughs> um, He's chairman selectors. Yeah, that'd be right. <laughs> yeah. Now, I've got a note here again. These are, Russell's made a ton of notes. I don't want to steal too much of his stuff. But uh, you were drafted by Melbourne in 86, is yeah, that correct? That's correct. Apart from uh, God's great gifts um, and, and a bit of luck, why didn't you go? Uh, well, I was a bit young. I was yeah, I was only a youngster then, and uh, I just started playing league for North Adelaide. And back then, you didn't have to go when you got drafted. Yeah. So I thought, no, I need a couple more years at North Adelaide, and uh, they were fine with that because I think it lasted a two-year period. Then it just yep. lapsed over, and then after that two years, Brisbane picked me up. Yeah. Uh, and Andrew, yep. yeah. So we, we both went up there. What was that? Posey's media's falling apart. <laughs> Everyone, everyone's bowing down to the grand <laughs> uh, So me and Andrew went up and had a look at the Carrara. They were at Carrara back then, yep. Brisbane Bears. And uh, they put us in this chin, tin shed and uh, we just looked at each other and said, nah, yep. better staying home. And, and then uh, obviously when the Crows come in in 91, Andrew met the Crows and I went to Hawthorne. Yep, and um, probably a fair decision. You got to play in the North Premiership and then in the Hawthorne Premierships. Did you play against Andrew in his first game in the AFL? Yes, uh, that's uh, Hawthorne uh, Crows game. Yep. Uh, we just won the uh, night final the week before. Yep. So down. the boys were celebrating. I remember it was about oh, two ish in the morning. Yep. And uh, they said, Oh, who have we got next week, round one? And I said, Oh, we've got Adelaide Crows, first game. Wow. So we went harder again. Yeah. So it was about five ish before we got home. Mm -hmm. And then we ventured to Amy Stadium and uh, the Crows give us an absolute hiding yeah. and got, points, got yeah. picked up by the, the bald headed one. And I that's say today that's the first time he's ever beaten me. Yeah? He got me. In anything ever? Anything. Yeah. <laughs> they will play anything like cricket out the back. He's always competitive. As soon as as soon as I'd hit the front He'd do his nana because back then he was a thug of a kid. Yeah. Still, still got the record in the uh, juniors for the most reports. Has he? Yeah, that's how bad he was. So every time I'd get in front, he'd, he'd, he'd do his nana. I remember one day we were playing cricket at the front. Cement pitch paved straight to the front door. Yeah. I'm batting beautifully, just hitting boundaries everywhere with this tennis ball, and uh, he was getting angry. So I was about four runs short of my 100. And uh, he said, just wait a second, I'm just going to give a drink. He's come back out. He's come flying in, he's changed balls. <laughs> Instead of a tennis ball, he used a golf ball <laughs> and knocked me out. Is that and right? The bouncer. Retired it? Yes. Yeah, fair enough. I was spewing because I wanted to fall for me under it. Was that, was that down the hall? You grew up holding hill, didn't you? Yes. Bouncy pitches down hall. <laughs> <hill. laughs> <laughs> so that's how competitive the trick was. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Now, I've got, I got one more. Oh, oh no. Let's just leave that down. Oh, tell you. Let's just leave it down, eh, Green? Yeah. Don't worry about it. Um, I'll, I'll put it up when Russell comes in. Uh, I've got these are just personal ones. I'm interested because you would have, we've asked you everything already. But your best minor round game you ever played in the S or, or your favourite one? You might not have been best on round in the SNFL and AFL. I should have probably given you notice on this one. Yeah, thanks. Uh, favourite? I know the SNFL do you have a, one. Do you have West, West Adelaide with Simsy. No, <laughs> no, I wasn't there. I'm, for, I'm, I'm glad I was at Hawthorne then. I know. Bath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I last year we uh, we talked about that uh, Mother's Day game against Port, where you yeah. beat us by three. The year we yeah. smashed in the GF, but yeah, yeah. Uh, we yeah, because I played. Um, <laughs> but but you're, is there another one for one round game? Um, for North, oh, I have to say the grand final '87 um, because mm. two years prior we were favourites against Glenelg. Yeah, maybe and and both, both yeah. times, and so we got over the line on '87. So I'd, I'd say that's my proudest moment in in South Australia. I remember one day in the AFL, I played uh, with the Hall Crows, 
and uh, we're playing Hawthorne at uh, somewhere down Tasmania. Uh, and I stood Shane Crawford, Sean, uh, Shane Hank Crawford. Mm. He was half forward, and I was half back. And I think as he was coach, and he said, "Just you know, just zone off him a bit." I said, "All right." <laughs> so every time the ball came down, I was zoning off Hank. They wouldn't wouldn't kick it to him. So I ended up having forty five touches on him. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and he still rings me up about it. And uh, he said, "Any chance of picking me up?" I said, "No, I had to just zone off you." Mm. So that was one of my favourites, and we actually lost. Did you? Yeah, Hawks got up. So so speaking of picking up in Crawford in yeah. Tasmania, what did he do after the game? <laughs> Back then, I think. <laughs> back then, I reckon he might have been a. He might have got out and about a bit, didn't he? Yeah, well, he was um, popular. Pretty, very popular young man. Very popular in Tasmania. He had right the here. old blonde streaks going around. I heard after the game, he said, "That's not what I'm talking about." <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was a good fella because um, being a older player, he was one. I was he, one of his mentors, uh, early days for Hawthorne. So um, yeah, he said the old ball versus the young ball mm. type thing. And the old ball got up that day. All right, I'm going to leave you. Jar's going to oh, get Hardy. Oh, Sorry, mate. Well, well, yeah. got Greeny's got three pages. <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, got, I've got heaps of pages. Um, footy trips. Yes. What's the best one you can tell me about? Legally. Don't touch well, it. Well, I think one of the best ones we were whole, went to Hawaii with the Roosters, mm. and we were um, uh, we were about to leave. Actually, we'd had a good time because in Hawaii. If, the nightlife's very interesting there, and um, mm. I remember one night we were walking down the main street, uh, a guy called David Sanders. Yep. Sheep, yeah. he played on the wing for us. Yes. He um, was had a few beers, and he wanted to get, check this room out, and uh, this lovely young lady said, come in, come in, and uh, Sheep said to us, yeah, you're coming in? I said, no, nah, no, nah, you go. It was a red light out the front. Yeah, well, it was, mm. type thing, mm. scenario. And uh, so we... He said, well, do you want us to wait for you or just go? He said, no, you just go. I'll meet you back at the hotel. So we were sitting out the front. We all left, come back the next day. Uh, he went through this room. said, oh, you know, take your clothes off. And, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, next next room, and he's waiting there, and next minute he was out the front again. So uh, taking all of his clothes, all of his money. <laughs> he, walked out, he walked back to the hotel with Starkus. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, geez, when he was telling us in the morning, yeah. it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. So we went back there the next day, and uh, yeah, it wasn't wasn't pretty. Gee, uh, did he get his clothes back? Yeah, no, oh. no, he was running around free bagging it. And uh, I remember we were just about to leave, and uh, Daryl Hart and I'm uh, Matty Campbell. Yep, Matty Campbell, sure. We we'd use this esky all week, and uh, it was still full of ice and stuff. These two we were just getting on the bus, and uh, Mick Merrill's going, oh, everyone ready here? I said, no, nah, cut them short. And then we heard this bang, and uh, Hardy and uh, Matty Campbell dropped this esky full of ice onto this car roof, and it just crushed it. <laughs> and then all the staff come flying out, said, everyone off the bus, you can't go. We were like, we were yep. ready to come back home. So that took us a couple of hours to work that out. And then, <laughs> um, Got us back on the plane and come back home. So that was a quite a footy trip. That one. Yeah. Plenty hey, of things happening. Tell me, um, all Australian selection. There was a story I heard, and I don't know how much truth in it. You got the phone call. Mm. No, no, I got the letter. You got the letter. Mm. What happened from there? Well, the AFL. That's what they do when you get in the uh, the Hall of Fame. They they say you're not allowed to tell anyone. Mm. But I had to tell someone. I was just so excited and. So uh, I was looking for my wife and uh, she was having a bath at the time. So I went in there with the letter and started reading. I said, oh, gee, huh? Made the AFL Hall of Fame. And she said, yeah, so? I said, oh, gee, you can get a little bit excited. Now, this is uh, this AFL, oh, can't get any higher. She goes, well, what do you want me to say? And I said, well, for starters, you can invite me in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she uh, said, uh, go and get nicked, and yeah. uh, that was it. So, yeah, yeah it went back a, out to the Prue the Roses. Yeah, so you see all the guys that get in it now, and the first thing they say is, you, you know, you're not allowed to tell anyone, so it's the hard That must part. be so hard. Yeah. It's such a high honour. Yeah, well, see, they, they let you invite uh, 10 people, like family or you know, Did friends. you invite him? <laughs> no, I didn't. It was a good move. No, that was... No. <laughs> was, oh, I bet he's dirty on that. Oh. Oh, I yes. bet he's dirty. No, I didn't give him an invite.
I think I did. He said he was busy, so I said, well, get nicked. He would probably get peeved off, I reckon. Who was that little bloke walking I think it was one of Lucozzi's love child. Has he got a mullet? Who? The guy that walked past. Yes. No, Ando. Ando. Yeah. Yeah, still Andrew had a mullet one day. Yeah, I know. I saw a, a, a replay on TV not so long yes. ago. Yes. And he actually had hair yeah. and a mullet. Yeah. But so was a guy sitting here had shorts that were like white oh, cappers. I used to wear the 28s. Yes. yes. And the long black mullet at yes. the back. Yes, I did too. That was back in North Adelaide days. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, I did. Mm. Um, and I remember one year Andrew coming home. He was in the, his early 20s because he lost his hair about... 23, 24. Mm. Um, he come home with a perm. Back then days, yes. his perms were in. Yeah. And I said, what are you doing? He goes, because he loved cricket. Yeah. I was more off season. I was tennis and he was cricket. I said, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I've got to look like Greg Capel. <laughs> <laughs> he had this perm. Uh, and because if you go to Gazer now, there's a photo of him yes. winning the under 16 medal. Yes. Association, and he's got this perm. Yeah. So there's there's my I remember gospel. That. But he and yourself were involved in that player retention scheme. Yeah. Which was set up by Max Bashir. Yes. Which was all right for the players. Yeah. But uh, the going to, you know, Brisbane and, mm. and wherever, it uh, it was a bit of security for SA Footy. Yes, it was. Which was good at the yeah. time. Yeah, it was. And for the players, yeah. but unfortunately, it couldn't be kept. And, no. And then you. Went well, that's to, probably one reason maybe why Macca stayed because yeah. I know he was on it. Yeah. Um, but he would have been a superstar, you know, Phil Mackin. Yeah, I heard uh, uh, one of the guys, Gary Lloyd, say it was probably one of the best players never to play at AFL football. Yeah, I, I agree Gary with that. Tosh. I agree with that. I stood him a few times and, geez, was he hard. He's, he's a hard man, didn't oh, he? Oh, he was a very, very good player. Mm -hmm. Very good. Posey uh, has actually given me a couple of questions to ask. Cause oh, is he? He's yeah. a bit scared, I think. He's scared? What did, uh, what did you say to Jamie Shanahan in the 97 Grand Final? Oh. Uh, what did you have for breakfast or something like that? No, I didn't. I, I I didn't say anything to him actually because we had a team rule. Uh, one of one of Blighty's team rules were if you had someone beat, why would you try and fire him up by yeah. bagging him or something like that? So I didn't say anything to him. Um, uh, well, you know, that was our team rule. Not to yeah. say anything, but. I remember the year after I had a, I had a crack at uh, Mick Martin, he had a crack at me on the boundary and I sort of gave him a little elbow and the ball went out of bounds and he's, he was one of the free kick and I said, ah, just throw it in here. And um, he was running past him, oh, he wouldn't have kicked a goal on me. <laughs> and I said, mate, Mick, I've been playing against North Melbourne for 13 years and never stood you once, why is that? Oh, God, yeah. I couldn't understand what he was saying. I said, you just come down here to full, back, full forward, mate, and come to my office, and I'll stand you, Mick. Go and tell Dennis to put you on me, because every time I played you, John Blakey tagged me. So, it's your coach's fault. Mick, not me. So, I would have loved to have stood Mick Martin. Shocking head on you. Oh. It's but a it's scary head. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I saw him in the EJ Whitten game. He's, oh, he's put on a bit of beef, too. Yeah, he's... He's wasn't the most skillful player, but he was pretty dedicated and pretty committed to the kangaroos. Just like Archer. Yeah, played their roles beautifully. Mm. Um, yeah. What were your thoughts on uh, Dermy and uh, Jason Dunstall? Well, uh, two di very different characters. One was a just loved to strut around the the rooms, the change rooms. That's Dermy. <laughs> Yeah. And he just loved doing the gym room. He just loved that room that he, he called the Dermy Brereton room. He had these massive arms and these chicken legs. Yeah. Oh, jeez, do, do some work on your legs. For heaven's sake. Like toothpicks. Mm. And a bit like this guy I played for Mitchum last week. He had these yeah. massive arms and chicken legs. Mm. Um, so we, we the boys have started calling him Dermy. Uh, but Dunstall was more professional. He was... Uh, the amount of the work he did on goal kicking was unbelievable. Um, Evident in the way. Yeah, because when I went down there, I, I, it sort of just started to get really serious training, and it was more like it was more. When I started there, it was the Tuesday, Thursdays, mm. and play weekends, and then when when I when I got to Hawthorne, Jason would say, "Listen, Wednesdays is goal kicking day. For whole, you know, if you ever want to come down, have your shots." Mm. 
He was always there Wednesdays doing golfing. It was interesting because one of the questions I wrote down to ask you today, the most professional player at Hawthorne. That was Dunstall. Dunstall. Clearly. Um, we had another guy that was pretty good at it too, was um, Chris Langford. Yeah. Um, he was an amazing athlete. Um, because too. He was just a unit. Because um, we used to call him Superman. He was built like Superman. And I said, how many hours have you spent on doing weights to look like that? And he said, not one. Not one hour. He, he was born like it. Ezzy was a pretty good boy too. Ezzy he? was an amazing uh, player. Mm. Uh, just tough, straight through the lines. Mm. Would take out the tagger for you. Yeah. Um, so he was, he was, he was to this day, it still is, the best captain I've played on that. Um, just the way he treated the youngest guy on the list to the guy, the oldest guy on the list, it was amazing. Excellent. Mm. All right. Yeah, three. Well, I'm back out here. Three. We're making a big. Uh, there's a massive amount of uh, rotations going this corner, which was your three-quarter time address against us. You mentioned the nine injuries. Uh, yeah. One thing we talked about when we uh, had a chat after the game is the fact that you had the potential to play some first 18 players during the holiday. Has that yeah. come to fruition? Any yeah, we've played three actually. Oh, so yeah, that's be good for It's been uh, great. There's three of them playing. Mention their names. Today. I'd love to hear their names. I'm sure. We've got a uh, uh, kid called Lockie uh, Harrison playing centre half back. Well, so he's six foot three. Yep. So he played first eighteen. Uh, who else we've got? We've got a kid called Stephen Starkey from straight from the school. Yep. And I think there's another kid that's pulled out this morning, um, who's a bit sore and uh, won't be playing. So we get Maddie Raymond, who's a kid from the school, and uh, Matthew D'Angelo, a kid from the school from last year. Both them two kids are are going really, really well. Yep. Uh, we played them two games last year against the men and gave them a little sniff. So this last two or three weeks has been great for our kids for next year. Yep. We'll give them a couple of A-grade games to, just to let them know that where where their, their, their standard and their fitness and they're playing against bigger bodies, obviously, uh, where they need to improve because the two Maddies from last year are, are killing them. All right. All right, we'll go on to the rest of the round. Uh, Salisbury 9660, uh, knocked off Pembroke 7850. Yeah, uh, we played Salisbury the other week at, at Salisbury. We played a really good style of footy. Uh, quite impressed with them. Uh, they beat Pembroke. Pembroke a bit like us, I think. We have a few injuries and... Um, Lost a few close ones. Yeah, and yeah. They, they've been competitive all year. Yep. Uh, I know when we played them, we struggled to uh, beat them in the end and uh, eventually we ran over the top of them. But, Look for three quarters are right in it. Yep. Uh, Smosh West Lakes eight eleven fifty nine. Probably a bit of an upset. Seaton Ramblers fourteen eleven ninety five. Yeah, that one surprised me. That was that Smosh too, wasn't it? Tom? Yeah, it was. Yeah, um, yeah, a bit of an upset there. Obviously, Seaton have done so well this year, hmm. sitting on top of the ladder and um, and uh, Smosh. Yeah, I, I'm, Smosh are a strange one. I reckon I'd love to have their depth and uh, their playing list. Um, you know, they've been in Div 3 for a while. Yep. Um, I don't know. They're, if they don't do too well this year, there's going to be questions asked, I suppose. They, yeah. they do have good depth, though. The, the, the A grade are second, B grade are top, C grade are top, and I think the D grade are fourth, I think. Yeah, so. and, and, yeah, yeah. and they're sitting in Div 3. I, I just yeah. can't, well, I can't work that one out. Yep. And um, the last game of the round, last week, 21 blokes, uh, milk chocolate gentlemen, uh, broke into the Painted Footy Club, wore our goonies and impersonated us. <laughs> Oh, I can't even know. <laughs> 7 9 51, uh, Athelstan 9 14, 1 28. 19 14. Well, I, that doesn't surprise me because the week before we got Athelstan into some really good form yeah. and they, they played really well. I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I would nearly say I would go a Kilburn and Athelstan grand final. If Ath yeah, Athelstan, we. if they can keep their discipline yep. under check, uh, if Rocky can keep them playing just footy. Because I've got the talent there. They, yep. they destroyed us two weeks ago. And uh, I thought their midfield just absolutely killed us with yep. uh, Led Sheedy. by Sheedy. Yeah, Justin Very Sheedy. good player. Yep. Which is probably, we'll go straight into this week's games because I think Greg Anderson is out there. It's Athelstan Salisbury um, at Athelstan. I think we all have to say Athelstan then. I'll go yeah, with Athelstan. Yeah. Yep. Athelstan too strong. Uh, Salisbury need a scalp if they're going to play finals, but it won't be Athelstan there in too good a form. Paraka and Smosh West Lakes, you can't really dress this one up anything, but Smosh will be hurting from last week's mm. loss and they'll have a bigger. 
this week. Yeah. Smosh ten goals. Smosh for me. Mm. Seaton Ramblers and CBC. David Green will be tipping in. There's no doubt about it, mate. <laughs> but unfortunately, yeah, you're running to CBC at the wrong time. Their first game at home in a month. There'll be a lot of supporters there, and I hope you can find a way. I'm sure you can because you're inspirational. But uh, I think Seaton will be too strong, mate. Sorry. Yeah, I, I'd be. Uh, we've got probably nine B graders playing today, so I'd be happy to get them, say, ten goals. Yep. Seaton, they they play their ground pretty well too. Yeah. It's, a, it's a weird shape and they, they stick to it pretty good. They, they play it really well. Uh, Pembroke and Kilburn. Uh, interesting to note that for when they met last time around, Pembroke yeah. went to Kilburn's first loss, but I don't think that'll happen today. No, on form, you'd have to go Kilburn, as I said before, probably Premiership favourites for me. Yeah. Pembroke, that's the school where the kid got struck Yes, away. it is. Yes. They, they might get up for him this week, but uh, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think Kilburn, they're, they're too good all over the ground. Yeah, uh, the last one is a huge game because it's fifth versus sixth, both teams seven and five. Mitchum and Payne, I'm not going to talk about Payne because I do it too much, but um, if Payne and Dope in this one, I reckon we might as well book our footy trip early. So uh, Payne will win this because they have to. Yeah, I was just speaking before, um, obviously playing Mitchum last week, they got us in the last quarter. Payne and got us the same mm. in the last quarter a couple of weeks ago at home, and uh, I reckon this is for uh, the top five this game, so she's worth probably double points this one. Yeah, I'll sure go is. for I'll go for Paynham. Thank you. Thank I'm, you. I'm going to go with Mitchum. Yeah, good on you. Just because they're doing a Burton playing for him. Yeah, fair enough. Dermy, watch out for Dermy running around. <laughs> Number 12 years. Number 12, all right. I'm sure all the boys will be listening. Thanks very much for being on the show, mate. You've been amazing. We've got uh, Ando to come. We're still going too, so we have to say goodbye. I wish you could have you on for the whole two hours, <laughs> mate. Um, is there anyone you want to say uh, hello to? Any just the, our major sponsor is the Hackney Hotel. I think the Crows boys have taken over, we're on the boys, so they'll look after us. And we've got on the 28th at the Hackney a auction night, so that's our ma major fundraiser for the footy club. For all our supporters, make sure you get out there, that would be a terrific night. Uh, we've got Key Investments and the Smith family are our, our sponsors as well, so we thank them very much. Thanks. Beautiful work. Beautifully done there, Mr. Jarman. Thanks again for being on the show, and you are welcome here anytime, my friend. Thank you, Tommy. No worries. <laughs> Add me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's on Facebook, I'm not. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, there's a fake Darren Jarman out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Rexy.